The idea of the water clock is thousands of years old, but the first attempts to build a water clock ended up in failure, and here's why. When you have a bottle filled up with water, and we'll take the top off so we don't have a vacuum, you might say, okay, start your timer and ready, set, go. Now, it is true that after a certain amount of time, water will stop coming out of the hole. But here's the problem. How do you get the timings in between that? And here's what I mean. Right now, the water's flowing pretty good. But as the water from the bottle drains, there will be less pressure from on top and the water will eventually begin to slow down. Now, if you are measuring the volume of water coming out and you put a gauge to that, what's gonna happen is at the very beginning of this experiment, your gauge is gonna move very quickly. We're losing water very quickly. But toward the end of the experiment, the water's gonna slow down. So the rise of the gauge will not be an accurate measurement of time. This was the problem. Now the bottle is more than a third full or two thirds empty. And you see how much slower the water is coming out of the hole. Now here's a solution that was discovered thousands of years ago. The idea is to keep the bottle full of water. Now what I've done here is I've cut a little notch out of here so that when the bottle gets full of water, the water will drain this direction. But on the other side, I've put a hole. Now the idea is this, we're gonna go into the kitchen, we're gonna fill up this bottle with water, but then we're gonna keep water going into the water so that it stays perfectly full. Then we'll capture the water coming out of the bottle and at certain intervals, we'll stop and we'll measure it. Now, the idea is that if you have a certain amount of time, there's a certain amount of water, no matter if you do it at the very beginning or you do it at the very end of the experiment. See, time should be proportional to the water that's coming out. Now, what will that be? Well, we won't know until we gather the data. But if we gather in, say, increments of 30 seconds or one minute, we should get a pretty good idea of what is the particular equation that matches this bottle. So what we've got here is the faucet is on just enough to keep the bottle completely full. And what we're trying to do is to get all the extra water to spill off to the side, while at the bottom, you have a constant stream of water. This should provide an accurate water clock. Okay, we're going to collect the data in 30 second increments. Tell me when to start. Okay, ready, set, go. Okay, that's two. All right, so far, it's been a minute and 30 seconds, and we have collected a little bit around 200 milliliters. So in 90 seconds, 200 milliliters. We're gonna do this again. Okay, it's been a full two minutes. And we have around 300 milliliters. Two minutes, 300 milliliters. Okay, let's do it again. Another 30 seconds. Okay, that's 230. And then, um, oops. Let's, let's do another 30, so take it up to three minutes. Okay, it's been a full three minutes of run, and we have...
just about, just a little over 400, I might estimate 410 milliliters. Now, what we're gonna do is for our last data point, we're gonna let it run for five minutes. Now, I expect this thing to be full and then I'll have to stop and empty it and we'll see how much it fills up again in the remaining time. Okay, so we're gonna go for five minutes continuous this time. So you can imagine what they would do in ancient times with for their water clocks is whatever vessel was holding the water, they would have a gauge and the gauge would be made uh, of an arrow that was somehow mounted to a piece of cork or a piece of wood. And the wood would float to the top of the water, as always would be at the top of the water, and it would indicate how high it was. Then they can work out the mathematics and see what time that was. Okay, we're gonna do a pause here to empty this and stop. Okay, so, so far we have 400 milliliters, approximately 400 milliliters. And we're gonna continue until we get to five minutes. So I'm gonna throw this out. We have to all remember we're at 400. Now, of course, these water clocks, they wouldn't have been made out of plastic. They would have been made out of copper, something that they could make watertight. So right now, a good guess would be that we're filling up 100 milliliters per minute. But we'll get a really accurate look when we get to five minutes. We'll just take the milliliters and divide it by five, and that will give us a rate per minute. All right, there's five continuous minutes, and we can add another... 300 milliliters. So, what total milliliters is that? What did we get from the first three minutes? 400. 400, and now another 300. So, 700 milliliters in five minutes. Okay, now just for fun, we're gonna try this other bottle, and it's not going to be continuously filled. In fact, it's a little overfilled right now. There, that's more like what you'd see in the store. And on the side, it says that this contains 355 milliliters. So we'll just do a comparison of how long it takes for this to drain without being continuously filled from the top. Now we're not saying that this bottle will not drain in a certain predictable amount of time. Like if we filled it up again and then we drained it again, we would expect roughly the same amount of time. But what we are saying is that it's the in-betweens that are going to be different. So for example, right now, we have about, so one minute and about 30 seconds. And I would estimate that there's about 150 milliliters. Okay, so about two minutes in and we don't even quite have 200 milliliters yet. Well, yeah, let's say we have 200 milliliters now. So you can tell that the pace of the water has slowed down and I'm having to pretty much hold it directly over my Pyrex because, see what's happening is that there, there is less and less pressure of water over the leak. Three minutes and 20 seconds, and we're at about 275 milliliters. If you don't keep the pressure constant, um, what happens is you have a curve when you try to graph this and not a straight line. And you can see this is really pathetic now. It's just basically dribbling straight down. I'm gonna call this at four minutes Okay, at four minutes, we have 350 milliliters. So there's your proof right there. 
I would have expected over 400 milliliters in four minutes. Um, so this water is coming out less and less strong as time goes on. So why was it so important that the relationship be linear for the ancient peoples, especially the Greeks? Well, let me show you down on the sidewalk. So pretend that I'm an ancient person and I don't even have a ruler. So what will be easier for me to do? To create marks of equal length. That wasn't so bad. Or to try to figure out what decreasing length the water is coming out. It's tricky to draw. So it's easy to draw things that are in equally spaced intervals. And that's what a linear equation is going to do for us. A linear equation is going to be able to make it so on our, on our container vessel, we'll be able to mark zero minutes, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, etc. So what we've seen is that if you take a given volume for a given time, so a given Y value for a given X value, you're going to get a constant number. And that constant number is called the slope. You lay out all the data points. If you can run a straight line through them, then you've got linear correlation.